Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayou gozaimasu. And today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I feed my baby tarantulas, aka the piece of Theria striatus that I've produced. And yes, this is going to be how a tarantula breeder does it. And I did make a video on this long ago, but that was with a very poor camera. So this one here is pretty much like an updated version of it. So without further ado, these are chopped mealworms. So essentially, I just got some mealworms and I cut them up to appropriate sizes using a pocket knife. And now we are pretty much just throwing them in and showing you guys how it's done. So I want to make it clear that this is not the only way because different tarantula breeders have their own ways of doing things. I find that this way is the most cost effective and pretty much the best way to go at it if you want to save money. So essentially what I'm doing here is that I'm giving a quick spritz to make sure the substrate or the size is moist. Now I did feed them like two days ago already. So the substrates for most of these enclosures for these little guys is already pretty much moist in the bottom. So I don't want to go heavy in terms of adding more moisture into their enclosures. So I'm just giving a quick spritz and then I'm throwing in a piece of mealworm and I'm just going to let them scavenge that because that's pretty much the typical nature of baby tarantulas. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now you can use live crickets or you know pinhead roaches or whatever works for you but I find that this way works the best for me honestly because it saves time and honestly is more affordable. So that's pretty much it in terms of explaining how I feed baby tarantulas. It's very straightforward and very simple. Now this is pretty much a rinse and repeats process over a hundred times for me but I'm not going to show you all 100 times because that's kind of repetitive, too repetitive as a matter of fact. So I'm just going to show you a bit of the process. And then I'm going to talk about some things because there's a lot going on this week. So uh, let us begin. So this week I've been very busy because I'm trying to get everything well fed this week in my collection because I'm going to be out of town on Saturday. So this video is going up on Friday. So the moment this video goes up, I'm going to be busy prepping for Saturday. So I'm going to be out of town. And all of these little guys that you're seeing on this video, they're coming with me because they're going to find new homes or new tarantula breeders or new tarantula vendors. That are going to take them in so yeah this is going to be a good buy for these little guys and do not worry everybody these guys are healthy they're eating and they're doing very well as a tarantula breeder part of the process is to ensure that all these little guys are healthy and they're eating very well to make sure they're well started and trust me if you're a tarantula breeder and the slings you produce don't look healthy then honestly it's not a very good look on you especially if you're trying to build up reputation as an acknowledged tarantula breeder you really want to ensure that whatever you're producing or whatever you're selling or whatever you're breeding is at least healthy and doing very well i think one big misconception is that people think that if you produce this species or that species of tarantula then it's going to sell regardless but that's not how it works if you produce slings of a rare or a high demand species that's good but if they're not healthy and if they look very poor in terms of their health then honestly it's not a good look so to me as a person who buys and sells tarantulas and breeds them i actually look at the spider not at what they're in when i buy tarantulas i know that some people practice the idea of like if you put them in a fancy looking enclosure or a fancy looking container or a tub when you sell them at a show or something then people are most likely going to buy it because they think it's healthy but i don't go that far i don't really like that well, the only thing i really look at is the spider itself because the spider can be in the most dirtiest enclosure that somebody's selling it for but as long as it looks healthy and as long as it's eating and it meets my standards to what i look for then that's honestly what i'm going to buy not necessarily whatever they're put in for sale whether it's a plastic bin a tub or a 16 ounce container or whatnot I look at the tarantula itself, not necessarily what they're being sold in, if you get what I'm saying. But honestly, that's how I approach buying tarantulas, but hey, that's just me. But the best thing I can recommend people is to trust your sources and whatever you buy them from, or whoever you buy them from. It's kind of confusing to wrap your head around it, but then again, I've seen a lot. I've done a lot and I've seen a lot of good, a lot of bad and a lot of confusing, you know, business practices when it comes to this tarantula market. It is not all rainbows and sunshines. I don't know where people are getting that misconception. There is a lot of uh, questionable motives in terms of this tarantula market. I know that people say that you do things for a passion, especially when it comes to living animals like this exotic pet trade. But if I'm being completely honest, passion can only go so far especially in this market this tarantula market is absolutely brutal to people who are only focused on passion and not driven on reality 
which is why I backed away from doing retail and just focus on wholesale now because at this point the competition within the tarantula market is very competitive and unless you're importing or unless you're spending lots of money buying the right species at the right time then honestly it's pretty much very rough for a lot of people but hey I think that's enough because I don't want to get called out by everybody who's in this tarantula market because they're gonna hate me <laughs> if I just told the truth or how I honestly felt but uh, yeah, let us get back into the tarantula stuff. So, I do have some mature males that I did not expect from my collection. So one of my Neoholothella Insei actually matured out as a mature male. So I'm actually going to use him to breed with my females because I didn't really see that one coming honestly. So that would be interesting. And then one of my Mbalforis actually became a mature male as well. As a matter of fact, a lot of my Mbalforis are reaching maturity. So I'm going to breed some of them. And the best part about it is that I did not invest any money in buying them. <laughs> so essentially I bred them, produced them, then I traded some away for some of the same species again. So I traded some Mbafori for some other Mbafori's of different bloodlines. So that way I could get new blood in. And essentially it's pretty much I paid zero. So it's pretty much a free breeding project honestly. And that's what I typically do. So when I produce tarantulas sometimes I'll actually trade for the exact same species just so I can get different bloodlines in to continue more breeding projects so I can just mass produce them which is honestly the most cost effective way of getting tarantula breeding projects going because paying for a male or paying for a female at times can be very irritating because I've dealt with scams before people overpricing and some very fishy uh motives as to why people are selling their males or females away I can tell a lot of stories about that actually especially about times I almost got scammed but uh I think that'll be for another day now there is some sad news because well, allow me to explain. So I made a video attempting to breed my piece of Thera Subfusca Highland female and honestly she passed away. I will explain more next week so that's for next week's video because as of editing this video I don't really have time to actually talk about it because I have a lot going on because I'm going to be out of town on Saturday. But besides the bad news there is a bit of interesting or good news. So my Pamphobedia species Nigracolor Ecuador actually molted out. So now my female is ready to go and the two males I did unbox here on this channel I still have them they're alive they're making sperm webs and they're going pretty well so I will breed them. Now I don't know exactly if I would actually record it or not so we kind of had to wait and see. So yeah for next week most likely it will be about updates about what's going on in the collection and future breeding projects for this year and although I said I wouldn't do more these might be an exception but let us wait and see. So without further ado if you enjoy this content please feel free to like comment and subscribe and stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel. I upload every single Friday so please feel free to do so and stick around and also follow me on my IG, my Twitter, links to everything is down below and support me on Patreon and with that stay lax and lax a out from the Kumo Sensei.